Hi, this is Lorenzo Valoria with GamesRadar.com, and I'm here with... Gordon Van Dyke, Senior Producer for War of the Roses. All right, can you uh, give us a rundown of the game and what we got here for the demo today? Absolutely. Uh, right now, uh, I'm going to show you the profile editor. And a profile editor for War of the Roses gives you the ability, once you've unlocked it, to uh, customize. Uh, you're going to allow you to customize some profiles and actually kind of make one that fits what you found that you like the best. And also unlock more weapons that uh, take a lot more skill to use so you can start learning those and practicing with those uh, as you've progressed through the game. Uh, kind of almost in a sense like it was the back then. I mean, we try to do things that uh, would reflect the time period back then, and it, it took a lot of experience, a lot of time before the uh, guys were progressing to the more advanced uh, weapons. So it's a nice little kind of like uh, thing that just, you know, coincidental uh, to a degree. Uh, so right now, we have the footman, we have the militia, we have crossbowmen. These are ones that we put through and uh, put together just for this event. Um, so. As for an example, when you pick a footman, you're going to be able to select everything from this type of shield, uh, the helmet, the armor, the perks, uh, and perks are going to give you different things. A mount is when you unlock the ability to have a horse, and it also depends on what you've uh, uh, you know, equipped yourself with. So not everybody can just jump on a horse. You have to specifically pick that, uh, that style of a profile to, to get set up like that. As a quick example of uh, main weapons, so we have a lot of different styles, crossbows, bows, lances, and now lances obviously is when you're on a horse, uh, spears, and a lot of different styles of weapons. You can even select nothing and just go in with a, uh, with a hand weapon, but uh, with a sidearm and a shield. But Because uh, when you do a main weapon and it's two-handed, then you lose the ability to have a shield. And so since he's that guy, we won't, uh, we won't mess with that and we'll do uh, sidearms. So then we also have different types of sidearms. And you always want to make sure that that sidearm is a complement to whatever your main weapon is. So if I had picked a poleaxe, for example, that's on a long pole, and it has a very small blade. So that gives you a low margin of error when you're striking at your opponent. So precision is very, very important in that case. So if I was, I would pick the sword, and I would pick like the Castilian sword. So then I have a weapon that has a longer edge, and it has, gives me, it's easier to strike with. So if I'm in a situation where, the, uh, where my pole arm, which is a, it's a long reaching weapon, and I'm up close to people, I'm gonna switch to this weapon or I'm going to switch to my dagger which is going to give me an advantage in that situation because uh, accuracy and uh, hit detection was very critical to us when we were making this game and one thing we noticed that a lot of these types of games don't do is they don't they're very inaccurate and it's very common in a lot of games hit detection is a very complex and a very costly thing when you make a game uh, so we sacrificed other things like decapitation and you know severed limbs and other uh, other fun stuff for this and I think that this really pays off because it's about gameplay uh, so then you'll be able to when you select a sword you can select your fighting style we'll just go with the common one it's just the Mario as you could say of the fighting styles the other one's Luigi maybe the other one's Wario right but <laughs> I like to use Mario everybody understands Mario and you'll be able to pick pick different types of steel, and these will all benefit you in some way with health of your weapon, because all the weapons are breakable, um, and then protection armor, and then damage absor absorption. So, uh, Toledo Steel is a really nice one. That's a high unlock. <laughs> uh, and then you have the different edge grinds, uh, different type of pummels, and that will give you a, a better uh, system as well. It's all very minor uh, benefits, but ones that are just enough to where every soldier probably is very unique. You probably hardly ever run across somebody that's exactly the same once you start getting into players that are using the customization system. Uh, there's just so many little nuanced things to do. It kind of really adds a level also of excitement and asymmetry to our uh, combat experience without pushing it out of the boundaries of being uh, fair and balanced. Uh, then you'll be able to do armors and helmets and stuff. And a really fun thing, I'll show you guys some hel uh, one helmet really quick. Uh, you'll be able to pick different helmets. So we're going to do the Soleil, and the Soleil had different options uh, back then. So some guys had it without a visor, and it just depends on how much money they had to buy. Most uh, soldiers back then had to buy their own equipment. Uh, it's not like now in the Army, it just supplies you with everything. Uh, so standard visor, and then you can change what type of coif you want. Uh, so we're going to do the arming cap. And you can add, even attach plumes and sexify up um, uh, up your helmet and make you much more flamboyant, which they did a lot back then. It was a sign of wealth. 
Uh, if you can waste money on some feathers for your helmet, you must have a lot of money. <laughs> and you'll also be able to paint it. Now painting was, uh, was a functional necessity back then. So they painted it typically to avoid it getting rust and it also served as an identification purpose. So it was easy to identify who, if that person was, they were fighting, was, was you know, a friend or foe. Uh, it wasn't like now where you have more military stuff. You know, it's similar to the military, but it was, uh, you know, back then, a lot of the, the other guys were brother versus brother sometimes, or cousin versus uncle, or, uh, you know, in those scenarios. So they looked kind of similar, right? Because they're related. So they needed some way to really identify them, uh, each other from each other. So we have rusted and worn, standard steel, and we're going to have other ones as well. This is just the, the beginning of what we want to put into this game. So when I do the Red of Fortitude, and you can actually see there's quite a big difference in the look. So it's really fun. And uh, when we have a lot of these options, then a lot of players look very, very different on the battlefield. And you'll start identifying other players by how they design and set up themselves. We also have coat of arms, which you see right here, which people will be able to identify. So I'm not going to take up too much time, and I'm going to go out of this because I know you guys probably only have so much time. <laughs> yeah, let's get get to stab in here. Okay, really quick, coat of arms system. So you'll also be able to change that. So I'll just do really, really quick and show the different uh, options. And a radish, that's a, <laughs> that's a dreadful one. <laughs> And you'll also be able to, for your great helms, put on different types of crests. <laughs> so, we'll I'll jump into multiplayer. Now, this is a Steam, uh, Steam game, so we're using Steam's uh, back-end system, and so when you, when you get this game, no matter how you get it, you'll, you'll set it up in Steam and launch it through that. All right, so... Well, the typical loading, map loading screen that you see in most <laughs> multiplayer games. Nothing too specifically special. So you start off on this podium, and then you're going to pick what, which of your profiles you want to use. So as you can see, here's the one that we just recently created. And then you can also edit your profiles before you jump into a match. Then you select your team, Lancaster or York. So we'll go with the Lancasters. And uh, you'll, we'll go with our guy that we made really quick. Uh, so, really cool thing, we also have squads, so you can join in a squad to help you stay with the team and your squad leaders have uh, officer perks that can also benefit your team, so staying in a squad uh, together is also very, very, very beneficial in our game. So, now right now I'm in ghost mode, that gives me a chance to spawn in at my base and if there's people spawn camping, you have a chance to like position yourself. But if you sp you can spawn on your squad leader, but if you spawn on your squad leader, you you don't go into ghost mode. You jump straight in uh, we, to avoid anybody taking advantage of the ghost mode and it's like ghost appearing behind somebody and <laughs> stabbing them in the back. Uh, so we have a really cool thing. Going back to, to uh, the level of hit detection that we have, when somebody strikes me, if they hit the chain mail, the, or the mail actually is how they identified it back then, that will give you a different type of uh, damage when a different weapons hit you. So each weapon, if it's uh, a thrusting weapon versus a bladed weapon versus a bludgeoning weapon, it's all going to be different. So we also have cloth. So I have cloth, and those are weaker areas. And when you attack somebody and hit them, we have, show you how much damage you did, and then we'll identify to you what you actually damaged as well. So then you'll know, okay, I hit cloth, or I hit their metal, or I hit their helmet. So you have feedback on what happened with your strike, because it can be very chaotic, and, and the action can be pretty, uh, pretty crazy. So, oh. Now, now I'm in fighting, so I want to put my visor on. Now a visor, ooh, and I got killed by a horse. So a visor is not just a visual... Um, uh, an add-on. Uh, it's also it's also something that uh, is going to give. There's also a functional reason for it. So what this does is now now it protects my face. And now with that, if somebody hits me in the face with their sword or stuff, then they won't get a one-hit kill. If you hit somebody in the head with a sword, you get the one-hit kill or an arrow. But now my face is protected. So it helps me, uh, you know, in the situations. But then there, there has to be a, a, a give and take. There has to be a compromise for why you're getting that extra protection. And that compromise is that you lose visibility. And so we put this vignette to kind of simulate that. And one uh, to give an example of why we went into third person. Uh, the reason we picked third person was uh, to give people a simulation of uh, peripheral vision. You can't do that in first person, no matter how hard you try. Otherwise, you just get a warped look uh, of the scenery. So that's why we did that. 
But uh, when, when I die again, I'm going to go in and I'm going to select an archer. And you're gonna, I want to show you really quick how we try to handle those situations. So we want players to be able to... Um, so now I just, as you see, you can execute someone or you can just finish them off by uh, pressing down. Now he, now he actually yielded. So when you get not in a knockdown position, you can either heal, uh, wait to be revived, or you can uh, yield and uh, take, lose a point for your team. So I'll probably die here. So if you saw the colors, the blue means I hit his, his plate metal. So I did some damage, but not enough to kill him. Oh, and I killed him. Can you, oh. can you talk a little bit about the uh, striking system and the blocking system and how you could uh, attack from different sure. angles? And that kind of yeah. So what we've done, uh, I'll select the archer and I'm going to show you that uh, really quick. So we, here we have the archer. Now, as you can see, I can spawn on my squad, uh, my squad leader. So now I've sp spawned in right away, right into the action. So I'm going to switch to my, um, my shield and my sword. So now what, I, what we did with our combat system is uh, some games have been using it like Mountain Blade where you, you, you click on your left mouse button and then you use your mouse to kind of swing your blade. And we took it a different step. We kind of took the same premise. And so what we did is like when I click on my left mouse button and I hit go to the left, I start my swing to left, but then now I have control of which direction I'm looking. So now you can aim your, you can actually aim your attack. And if you like go back, then you do the thrust. Or if I go forward, then I'll do my overhead swing. And right, of course, I'll swing from the right. And those also have benefits as well, because if you swing, as you can see, if you swing from the right, you'll hit the wall and it'll stop your, your hit. So if you have other people around you, that can also stop you as well. So you want to go into a thrust. Now it takes more accuracy to get that hit but it also avoids you from getting collision from other objects or other players around you. All right, so we're about out of time. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to mention about the game before we uh, get going? Uh, sure. Um, one thing, uh, just the ending, it's coming out in September uh, 2012, and we have a beta that's going to be starting the second week of August. And uh, if you guys... Uh, pay attention to games radar they're going to have a, a chance for you to get into the act uh, into the beta and get you know guaranteed access awesome thanks a lot for your time and uh for more information on war of the roses check out gamesradar.com